Hello, Facebook. Hello, Scrabble family. Hello, Scrabblers. We are here at the 2017 North American Scrabble Championship. I am Josh Greenway. I am joined by the 2014 winner of this event, Conrad Bassett Bouchard. Conrad, how are you? I'm hanging in there. I'm awake. We're good. That's good. <laughs> so we are here for a very particular reason. We are providing social media coverage for the event. Um, and what we're doing tonight is a little bit special. We are doing a live broadcast. What are we talking about tonight? We're updating people on what's going on. We're going to talk Scrabble. We're going to talk about how day one went here in New Orleans. And uh, we're going to see how things have been and see how everyone's doing. We're going to be joined by two special guests. Uh, number one uh, is going to be our uh, standings correspondence. Uh, correspondence. Correspondent Mike Ginsell. He's going to be joining us in just a little bit to give a rundown on where every division is. And then we've got a feature interview tonight. We've got the director of this entire show. We got Art Moore, big fan favorite, and we're going to hear a little bit about how uh, what it takes to run this thing. That's what I'm really excited about because this is yeah. Art Moore's. This is the first national under Art. The last. Five maybe we're under Dallas. Yeah, um, big shoes to fill, but <laughs> absolutely. So I want to hear what his approach is about, and um, let's see. So it's it's day one of a 31 game uh, tournament. Seven games were played today. It's just recently concluded. Um, to the, what's on the agenda for tonight? So tonight, uh, all the kids are going to get together. They're going to play board games and eat pizza, which, you know, sounds pretty cool. And uh, after that, there's going to be the yearly trivia night, which my team is going to win. All right. Well, so this is interesting. Um, and uh, so I never play the trivia. Like, I've, you know, kind of come in midway through the trivia. I don't like trivia all that much. Hmm. Tell me what you think. Like, you're all excited. Your team's going to win. What is it about trivia that you like? Well, in this case, I was actually just asked to join a team randomly last year, and for some reason they asked me to come back, even though I didn't really contribute all that much. Um, but I played in I played quiz bowl in high school, and uh, we got to go to quiz bowl nationals. And I don't know, I just I love geography and sports, and I love this because there's Scrabble trivia, which I'd like to think I'm pretty good at. So that's awesome, and. Um... What I find really interesting about the Scrabble community is there's this overlap with sort of the trivia yeah. community. So yeah. you have quiz bowl experience. We have players who have been multi-day winners on Jeopardy. We've got Jason Keller, who is one who is just walking by right now, who is one of the top ten all-time money winners on Jeopardy. Is that true? He's I think that's there. true. It's close. One, I think, two hundred and eighteen or two hundred. It's really yeah. amazing. Was that including the Tournament of Champions? I don't know. Yeah. But he certainly did very, very well. Yeah. And so I always think if I go to the trivia contest, I'm going to be on a team that doesn't have Jason Keller on it, and then there's no chance for me to win. So does your team have Jason Keller on it? It does not, uh, but we've got Sal Piero, who is one of the defending champs from last year. We have uh, Judy Cole, who has been on Jeopardy. Uh, and a couple of other just you know fantastic trivia superstars who – know a lot of stuff and make me look like kind of a fool which is not wrong but you know that's amazing i didn't even know judy was on jeopardy i oh, already yeah. i already love judy cole and get a chance to work with her on a bunch of different projects but now that i know she was on jeopardy uh, that just takes it a few notches higher and she was the naspa player of the year last year is that the rose award okay oh, so the she's, rose award yeah and what is the definition of the rose award I believe uh, that is a an award dedicated um, to the female Scrabble player who is, you know, the best contributor to our game. It's named after Rose Crisworth. I'm not sure if I pronounced her name right, but she's one of the uh, the top female Scrabble players in the history of our game. And so it's, you know, it's one of the most important awards we give out and every I think year in her honor. It's a mix of like fierce determination, yeah. but also sportsmanship. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's contribution to the game. I mean, in Judy's case, she's just. You know, it's one of the social media people and someone who's just always on top of everything that's going on in the community and making sure we're all aware of it. 
Yeah, and Judy does much more than just social media. Yeah. She's on multiple committees. She knows where all the bodies are buried. Um, and she's a real star yeah. contributor, an yeah. important person in our organization. Yeah. So, and, and yeah. in case in case you don't know, uh, we've got our we've got our logo back here. The show is called NASPA tonight, and I wanted to bring up what the organization is. NASPA stands for North American Scrabble Players Association, and there are about what 2,500 active Scrabble players across Canada and the U.S who play this game, this competitive Scrabble. And uh, we all love it, and, you know, we're always looking for other people to come on, give it a try, yeah. and uh, and go from there. Yeah. So, listen, before we get to today's standings, um, Conrad, you won this event in 2014. You cashed a very big check. You told me you blew through that on frivolous expenses. And... Right. Um, Tell me about what your Scrabble journey has been like. Was it a couple of dinners you blew the ten grand on? No, I just had a period of fun employment where I just kind of uh, lived. I just moved to Portland, Oregon. Um, right after that, I moved into a house with three other Scrabble players. And so I just figured, you know, I would just live life for a little bit and uh, just hang out. And, uh, yeah, it kind of it lasted quite a while. You know, uh, I still had some, some money in the bank when I went and got another job. That's but uh good. You know, really just kind of chilling, having having some fun with it. Fantastic. Well, it's going to be really exciting. Uh, four days from now, we are going to crown a new Scrabble champion for 2017. I think um, now's the time to take a look at how everybody did in day one. Yeah. So, um, Conrad, thanks very much. Yeah. We're going to be hearing from you. We're going to be hearing from me as the days go forward. Make sure you like the NASPA uh, the NASPA Scrabble page, if you're, uh, it's facebook.com slash NASPA Scrabble. Um, that's where all the social media content is going to be. That's the home of NASPA tonight. And uh, thanks so much, buddy. I yeah. look forward to see you tomorrow. working with you over yeah. the next few days. And now we are going to bring in the one, the only, Mike Ginsell. Come on, Mike, get in here. Yay. Hello, Scrabble people. Mike, introduce yourself. Uh, do I really need an introduction? That's okay. Um, <laughs> hi there, Mike and Sal here, Collins 2 player from Orlando, Florida, um, also part of the social media committee here with the NASPA event. We're glad to have you here today. We're doing uh, a recap of day one's events here. I got my special reading glasses on so we can take a look at who's been doing well in our first day. Very early on, we still have 24 days left. 24 days. 24 games. Yeah, yeah. We'd be here for a long oh time. Oh my God! If it days. was if it was twenty four days, twenty four games. That would be meeting. crazy. And that before we get into the standings, I just want to say thanks for coming on the broadcast. Oh, thank you. I think you're a guy who's got a lot of passion and a lot of energy, and uh, you know, I just appreciate you being here and stepping up. And, and getting on to the live broadcasting here. Well, I appreciate the special guest correspondent slot also. What you, what you do is phenomenal, and if I can only add just a little bit, of, a teaspoon of, of sass and talent, then my job here is done. Yeah, well, all right, people. Let's. Uh, I'm going to say to Mike, turn up that sass meter to 11, and let's go through some standings. Where do you want to start? What division are we going to start Let's start with? with, of course, the big money dog, Division One. We knew Nigel Richards came in first seed. By almost 100 points in rating, we thought he would be, you know, a fast contender. A lot of people thought he was a fast contender. Nigel, unfortunately, did not have a good day one compared to the rest of the field. He is actually, I believe, 4-2 and two, and in 13th place. Nope, he is in 16th, 4-2, plus 365. And we do have our top three, which is a very surprising top three, actually. Gotcha. Well, before we get in there, in case you don't know, Nigel Richards is generally considered the best Scrabble player in the world. He's won this event, I think it's five times, or certainly four times in a row um, as of a few years ago. He, I played him actually round one of our Niagara Falls tournament in May. Um, it was an honor and a half to play him, and it was uh, quite scary. So, yes, Nigel has won in French. He's won the world. He's yes. won the U.S. Nationals five or six times. So he is, of course, the odds-on favorite in Division One in our TWL, which just stands for, of course, the word list or truncated word list, I believe. So he was the odds-on favorite, but right now he is not even in the top 15, but plenty of tournament left to play for Nigel to make a comeback. Absolutely. So now that we've talked about Nigel, we can put Nigel to the side. Let's talk about who is currently leading 
in Division One. Here we go. Okay, so in Division One, we have a five-way tie for first place for six and one. Wow. That's right. But what ties are broken in Scrabble are by the spread. Right now in first place, we have Alex Sajolham from Linwood, Washington, who is six and one plus six seventeen. I actually met Alex last night or two nights ago in the lobby. He's about fourteen. I want to say fourteen to sixteen years old, approximately, give or take. Very nice guy. Very funny. Um, is very passionate about the game, so very excited to see him in first place. We have Benji Ben Schoenbrunn from Ardsley, New York, 6 and 1, plus Benji. 5 to 3. Actually, speaking of Alec, Alec's right over there. I see Alec. Hey there, buddy. There's our first place person right there. That's awesome. And then in third place, we have Ron McCohen from Chester Springs, Pennsylvania, who is 6 and 1, plus 498. So, very close battle in the first day. We have three players within 100 points of each other in spread. Just to follow up real quick, Kevin Fraley is in fourth position, and Rafi Stern, an early favorite as well, in fifth position at 6 and 1, plus 374. Well, that's super exciting. So, that covers Division 1. Um, now, we've got Alec right here. Alec's right here. Um, Alex, do you want to lean in wanna over lean in? Lean Mike's in shoulder and just wave to everybody? Just, just wave to the cameras. Here, you got to lean in. Lean in, right here. Right here. Yeah, get in between us. That's our first place person right there. And here, come come back. Okay. Come back. How does it feel to be in first place? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've never been on that. But, hey, listen, I'm just asking how you feel. Are you feeling good, strong, nervous, feel like this is temporary? What's going on? Yeah, I'm feeling stoked. <laughs> awesome. I would be, too. Listen, nice to meet you. Yeah. Great job on day one, buddy. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Good job, okay? Okay, so okay. that is Division One. Division One's good. What are we going to next, Mike? Division Two, which is very tight, actually, in the top three. We have Robin Lewis and Katia Ledzin. Katia actually wrote a book about Scrabble. Um, I think it's called By Just Grew Out My Bangs. <laughs> yes, um, Ka yeah. yes, Katia wrote a book about um, beating cancer and playing okay. Scrabble during it. Um, Katia, I played her actually two years ago in Charlotte at an early bird. Beat her, shockingly. Very good player. Robin and Katia are tied with seven wins, zero losses. Wow. But the spread difference is only about 150 points. Robin Lewis is in first place with 463. Plot positive spread. Katia leads in second with plus 276. However, our third place person right now is Wes Eddings, who is 6 and 1, plus 690. So Wes wow. can jump ahead if he wins a couple more games in Division 2. That's amazing. All right. Well, so that's Division Two. Let's go to Division Three. Division, division three. three is the uh, division that I would have been playing in, right. that I've played in four times, and I actually had a surprise cash last year. Look at in that! Ninth place. Whoa! Ninth you could win place. money playing Scrabble. I would never. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> All right. Where Where are we at with Division, division three? three? I want to see if I know division anybody. Division Three here. is even closer. We have Jack Peters from Walton, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston, 7 0 plus 967. Wow. And we have a school Scrabble player right next to him, Cooper Kamatsu from Los Angeles, 7 0 plus 802. That is a 165 oh. point difference. Very, Man. very close. And then we have Diane Wienerman from Annapolis, Minnesota, 6 and 1 plus 488. She's also in it, very close. Fantastic. Oh, actually, one more person, real quick, to look at. We have Rachel Gillette, one of my friends from Division 4. From Las Vegas. Oh, wait, well, she now no. is it? No, she's from Colorado. Yeah, six Colorado. And one. She had a hundred point play. Uh, played squares against me in Las Vegas. Great player. <laughs> Great player. Happy to see her in four. You know place. what's weird is I met Rachel in Vegas too, in 2013. That's where I met her. Yes. Oh, but well, we didn't meet. I know, right? Well, That's we're, so weird. But we're friends now. All it's right. all good. But hi, yes. Rachel. Rachel's hi, Rachel. The best. Love you, honey. Okay, okay, let's Division go to four, Division 4. Which is where I, I played for quite some time before switching over to Collins. Division 4. Ooh, we got a battle for Division 4. Top 3 are all 6 and 1. Mary Logulo, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, from Westminster, Colorado, is 6 and 1 plus 515. Just 25 points behind is Lila Crotty's daughter, Lila, who created the. Crest City Cup with Kate Absolutely. Connolly. Lindsay Barra is in second, six and one plus four ninety, just twenty five points off the lead. Lindsay is doing very well in D four. Amazing. She wanted to play Collins Light, but wanted the challenge of being in the top seed. I spoke to her earlier today, and of course, she's doing everything great on that. Uh, not too far behind is Diane Kerner from Beverly Hills, who is six and one plus two oh two. Not too far behind that as well. We have Benjamin Ansel, who is Zach Ansel's brother. Oh. Zach oh, Ansel brother. was on okay. Jimmy Kimmel Live. He's in D3, Amazing. top 10. Benjamin is in fifth place, 5-2, plus 449. 
Nice. It's dad. Yeah, that's what dad. I thought. I it's thought, his dad. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. But that's all right. I can, I can feel the pain. There are a lot of Ancels running around. I can feel the pain slip coming to, right now. It's tough to keep track of them. Okay. So now let's get over to the big dictionary. The International Dictionary. The International Dictionary. The one now, that has many words. How many more words does the International Dictionary have? Approximately 100,000, but clearly I haven't learned all of them yet. <laughs> clearly. Now, before we get into this, why, why Collins? Why the International Dictionary? Why did you make the switch, Mike? Um, so I switched in 2015 at the first, uh, my Crescent City Cup, my third Crescent City Cup. Um, first thought was it's a five-point challenge versus a double challenge where if you challenge someone in TWL and you get it wrong, you lose your turn. So the rules are a little bit different. Rightio. Um, I feel like I wanted to play more of an international lexicon. I definitely wanted to, um, pursue possibly playing internationally someday. Um, a lot of my friends were playing Collins. Uh, so kind of like the mom, like, if your friends would jump off the bridge, would you do it too? <laughs> so, yes, I jumped off the bridge into Collins, into, Col into the Lake of Collins, if you will. Um, and you've enjoyed it. Oh, I've loved it, even though I'm god-awful at Scrabble sometimes, let me tell you. But um, Collins has been a lot of fun. We have the Collins 2 division for the first time in Absolutely. And, and, we'll, and we'll get right into those standings. What I was going to say is what's interesting is some people feel like, oh, well, we've got a split in lexicons here. But it's also this, like, amazing kind of separate community. Like, we're, we're one all one big family, but then there's this Collins subset and who all seem to have a lot of fun together. I was out uh, last night, and it was almost all Collins people. We were watching some live jazz. Yes. Um, uh, Fretzels, I think it was called? Yeah, Fretzels. Yeah, Fretzels, yes. Fretzels. So, anyway, yes. I, I think it's awesome. We're, so all, let's, we're all in this together, as the great High School Musical once said. That's a great uh, <laughs> classic movie of cinematic history. We're all in this together. But, Zach, Zach Efron, right? Zach Efron. That guy is hot. All right. So... Okay, then. <laughs> so we're going into the Collins 1 division now. The big favorite was, of course, Dave Wiegand, yes. who was 140 rating points above the second-seeded player, Evans Glinchy. And now he is the odds-on favorite because he – what are his major accomplishments? Two, um, he's oh, done everything. He's, he's won, won a North American championship he's and won. a world? Um, I do not believe he's won world. I believe, oh, he, I believe maybe he's missing it's coming. that yet. It's coming. But Dave Wiegand has also won his last six events. Oh, he is, wow. Uh, he's come in first place. He came in first place in the Niagara Falls. Yeah, absolutely. He did very good, but he is not in our top ten right now. Dave Wiegand had a very uh, poor afternoon, unfortunately. Okay. Scrolling down here to Dave, he is in 14th with 4-3 four and three plus 296. But Dave is only in 14th place. It's not that far behind. In fact, we actually have a tie for 12th place. That's really weird. Same uh, win-loss record and same spread for Jeff Devnot and Scott Jackson. I've never seen that really that often. Yeah, there you but go. Dave, All right, let's move to the top three. Top where, three. where are we at? In Collins 1, we have Carmel Dodd from Australia in first place, 6-1 and one, plus 397. But her fellow Australian just six points behind is John Holgate, 6-1 and one, plus 391. Six points, Josh. That is wow. one two-letter play, possibly. That's right. I was going to say it's one tile difference, but I don't think there's a six-point tile. We also have in third place, we have Joey Kraftchick, Joey the K. Joey the K? Joey the K. He is 6-1 and one, plus 303. So within 100 points of Carmel and John, um, also at 6-1 and one is Chris Leip. From St. Louis, Chris Leip, uh, who finished runner-up in Worlds 2014 against Craig Beavers. Right. My Little Pony Famous, all that good stuff. Uh, we have a fan for Carmel in the chat room I just see there. I also round at our top five is Mr. Tim Weiss from Jersey City, who is 5-2 five two plus 534. So very tight. And, of course, can't forget Evans Clinchy, our number two seed, who's in sixth position, 5-2 five two plus 315. Very tight battle in the top six. For Absolutely. Sure. I had a great interview with Evans at... Uh couple weeks ago in Albany. Quite a character, that Evans Clinch. For sure. Absolutely. All right, let's go to CSW2, as you call it. Or as I call it, the my division. Yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, let's see. Okay, so in first place is not Mike Ginsel. I mean, it's Caroline Polak Scowcroft from Australia. What's with Australians? They're winning CSW right now. Amazing. I mean, Hugh Jackman and Olivia Newton-John will be shedding tears right now. Uh, Caroline is 6-1 plus 317. Fun fact, I actually beat Caroline in Reno, so hopefully that will rub off for tomorrow when I play her. Shauna Petrie, 5-2. Shauna! 
Canada, five and two plus four seventy eight. Um, played her in round one, lost by two hundred twenty, and uh, there's a reason why she's a good player. And Lila Crotty, the godmother of the Crescent City Cup, as I call her, yeah, from right here in Louisiana, five and two plus three eighty three. Lila's actually right over there. I see her with Lindsay, her daughter. Austin, a lot of other people there hanging out. Um, so we have two Crotties in the top on the leaderboard. Another quick thing to note: um, we have an 11-year-old player by the name of Cherish Andy Oaklow from Sugarland, Texas. Very sweet player, very nice. She was rated a little bit lower, more towards my area. She finished. She's right now in sixth place, five wow. and two, minus 77. And then I know everybody's wondering what Mike and Sell's doing. Well, um, uh, I'm in 22nd, which is. Uh, yeah, it's last. Okay, so one and six minus five eighty four. But hey, I mean, listen, there's a better lot, than last year. There's a lot of time left. We we've all had ups and downs. Uh, uh, several I, downs, several downs. I predict a much higher finish than last place. Oh, definitely. Uh, That's the goal is basically not last before the end. So those are the standings. Um, and we're gonna we're, have new names tomorrow, possibly. Very new names could be a very different I, leaderboard. I imagine that will happen, and we'll keep our eyes on uh, really the two biggest fish in the pond. That would be Nigel and Dave, and me, and you. I'm just kidding. This right. Is terrible. It's not about you. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> Listen, all not all the jokes are going to fly. When you were talking about the Australians, it took me a second, but then I was going to be like, "Oh yeah, I'm excited down under." But then I felt that wouldn't really that doesn't sound appropriate. So, what we're going to do now. Is, I'm gonna say bye. We, <laughs> and we are gonna move on to our feature interview. Uh, I, I see him coming down. It's the big man himself, the one who is running the show. I want to give a warm welcome to the one and only Art Moore. Art, who? come on down. Oh, it's this guy. So well, you're out of here. And bye. Art's coming in. I'll see you guys Thanks, tomorrow. Thanks, Mike. See you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. See you. Art, how are you? I'm doing great. It's been a long, busy day, but it's it's exciting. It, it's great to see a room full of people playing Scrabble and, and being able to facilitate. Absolutely. Um, I, uh, I am also a Scrabble director, but being a Scrabble director is one thing, folks. And, it's, and I've always felt like the type of person who brings people together. But what we're talking about here is a very large event. A lot of people, a lot of moving parts. It's really the organization, the management, um, the discipline. That's what's going to make a great event. How do you think it's going so far, Art? Uh, it's going quite well. Um, we had a great team setting up. I have a great team on the floor. Uh, so let's let's me go and do my administrative tasks. Um, things are going quite well. I'm getting uh, very positive reviews from, from the players. So I'm happy where we are. Um, I'm having a great time with this. That's fantastic. And this is you, this is the first Nationals that you're organizing. You are taking over for Dallas Johnson, who ran, was it five of these? He ran four of them. Four of them. And Dallas did a fantastic job. Now the torch has been passed. So, a couple of questions. One, what is the approach going forward? Do you feel like you're now bringing your stamp onto the event? Do you feel like there's a kind of personal filter that the individual director stamps that event with there is um it's not quite as uh, prominent as i'd like it to be but this is the first year uh there's a lot to learn a lot to understand um so i i was content with keeping things as is um until next year when i have more ideas um i have uh you know uh the team is behind it so i i, I think when we get to buffalo next year we're gonna have a lot of fun a lot more fun and do, do things a little differently. So it, it, it's going to be great. Fantastic. Well, I was super excited to take part in um, this is the first national that I've had any kind of official role. Um, so taking part in the staff meeting was super cool. Uh, that happened yesterday. And what I'm amazed by is sort of what you're taking care of from the top high level stuff all the way down to can can you confirm this for me that before our broadcast you were literally standing on these chairs that were sitting on lowering this sign is that true the reason why you can see the sign <laughs> is because i reached up there to get the height um lower to where where it's visible so um uh, along with organizing yeah i i'm not afraid to get my hands dirty and get do what needs to be done it's all about the details right uh, absolutely. Take care of the details, and then the big picture works out for itself. Do you think that's true? Is that a saying? <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> don't sweat the small stuff. It's all, it's small, all small stuff. stuff. Is that something? No, there's a lot of big stuff. I don't stuff. know what applies here exactly, <laughs> but what I know is we've got an event with how many people? How many players? 369, I believe, was the last number I saw. Okay, um, and staff number? Staff number is 23. Okay, so if I do that math, it's about 492. I think that's right. No, 392. <laughs> I gotta pretend that was a joke. 392 people that are basically within the organization chart of this guy, and I think you're doing a fantastic job. Well, let's add on the uh, the wonderful staff at the hotel, who um, who's at my command. It seems when I need something, they're on, Johnny on the spot. So, uh, the 396, it might be closer to uh, the 420. One. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I'm going to ask you to say a few words about who I'm guessing is uh, your favorite staff member. You, a very important person to the staff, the assistant to the director. Can you give me a little bit of a rundown of what's going on there? Boy, oh boy. Um, as much as I get credit, she's actually the engine that makes all this go. <laughs> um, as I told everyone the staff, um, at the staff meeting, if you want to know what needs to be done, ask me. If you want to know where something is, ask her. Um, and tell me who her is. Yeah, let's, get, let's go. <laughs> she is uh, the lovely Diane Moore. She's my wife of 11 years. Uh, when I was approached about taking over for Nationals, I was uh, initially reluctant wanted to think it over. She, she was chomping at the bit. She had already decided before I could think about it that, yes, we're going to do this. <laughs> without, well, without her support, the um, uh, we couldn't do this. So um, as much as I get credit for it, she really deserves at least that much, if not more. I love the fact that not only is everybody who's in attendance here part of a larger Scrabble family, but that the family comes right home to how the event is organized. And I just I think it's fantastic. And um, I couldn't be happier to be here. I couldn't be happier to be on your team. And, um, you know. I'm just looking. I'm just looking forward to another four days of Scrabble fun, and then I'll be counting down the days to Buffalo. Uh, absolutely, and and I'm, I'm excited that we have the social media presence we do this year. Um, it, I, I feel like it's really going to help us uh, reach out. Um, for one, it helps us engage uh, the players who can't be here, and those who don't understand Scrabble or, or know why we do this, it gives them a better idea, and, and we hope to see them part of the family as well. Absolutely, because even though we will cover players who are playing Scrabble at the highest level that you could imagine, um, there's a reason that there are you know almost 400 players here, and that's because everybody has a good time. The uh, the motto of NASPA is. Um, making words, building friendships, and I'm a big believer in both halves of that motto. Um, and certainly, you know, once you get into this family, it is, you know, really tough to uh, get, it's tough to get out. Um, so what I was, what I was going to ask you was, can you reflect, you know, look, you were a player before you were a director. Then you directed a division. Now you're the director of the whole thing. Like, what brought you to Scrabble in the first place? Um, Scrabble is my mother's favorite game. So I played Scrabble nonstop as a child and growing up all, all through my teens and everywhere. Um, as I got older and life got in the way, um, you know, I put Scrabble to back burner. But once, once a little more time freed up and I could focus on it, I said, okay, I'm going to join a club. I joined the club, uh, I, I played the tournament, and I was hooked. Um, initially, it, it, it was competition, competition, competition. But after, after a few years of that, I, I stepped back and realized the social aspect here is, is, is amazing. And yes, we come here to compete, but it's also a great time once a year to see people we haven't seen in a long time. And yet, we actually, we really are family around here, and it, it, it's great to renew those, um, those bonds uh, each year. Fantastic. Well, listen, Art, I want to thank you for your time. I know you're a super busy man, and uh, this, this was great. And this is going to wrap up the first ever, the premiere episode of NASPA Tonight. But we'll be back every night after the full day of play. So we've got three more of these, and we'll be coming to you 
uh, with all kinds of live interviews. If this is being played on a, on a few different uh, Facebook pages, but the main site, if you want to see all the social media coverage, is the NASPA Scrabble Facebook page. You go to Facebook, you type in the search NASPA, N-A-S-P-A. You can read it over art right there, NASPA Scrabble. You will find the page. Like that page, and you'll see all the social media coverage, all the fun, all the action. And I don't have anything else to say other than uh, thanks very much, and this is awesome. Thank you, and we'll be back at it again tomorrow. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Is this thing still on? <laughs> all right. Okay, I think we're done. All right, thanks, Art. Let me just get this dealt with. Okay, let's leave that.